All right, everybody. I'm hoping that you guys can hear me okay. Um, if uh, if there's no sound, type something in the comments, and I'll see if I can fix that. Otherwise, uh, uh, hit me up and tell me where you guys are coming from. Anyway, so I'm Stacy Budge Camison, and with Urban Gypsy, and I'm in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, just right outside in Cary. And if you guys caught me last week, um, we spun up these Rologs. Anyway, wait, let me double check, make sure we're still live. Yes, okay. We spun up these Rologs. And during our session, we decided that we were going to um, spin them up. And I, I was in, that's what we're doing today. I'm going to spin these up and show you what they look like. I also carded some some other Rologs to match. I mean this to match these. I didn't card any more of this but I had these carded up. So I'm gonna they kind of match. I put them together. Anyway, so this one. This is oh heck. Yes, this is the one. This is the one we carded up last week. Alright, so <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so before we get started, um, just a little housekeeping. In the chat, if you will uh, hit me up, if you'll hit me up with a cue in front of any questions you might have, um, that will help me kind of flag those questions. I'm going to try and, and stay on top of the questions. Um, so if you forget to put a cue in front of it, don't worry. I'm going to try and go back through and catch the questions, but especially with spinning, I'm not able to look at the screen as much. So that would help me. So when I pause to answer questions, I might be able to find it a little easier. Anyway, um, and other than that, uh, excuse the background noise. I, we live really close to kind of a busy road and the fire station. So, um, if that comes by, I'll pause until that comes, if, until that passes because it's pretty freaking loud. Um, so there you have it. All right. So today I'm going to spin these roll logs, like I said, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do, um, two ways. When I do art yarns, I mean, there's a, a bunch of ways to do art yarns, but the stuff that I like to spin with these roll logs are, um, singles and and uh, coarse spun. That's not coarse spun. This is coarse spun. And coarse spun. So I'm going to show you guys uh, how to do both. Um, and I'm also, first though, I'm going to answer a question that popped up in, in the Fiber Art Collective. Uh, somebody had asked uh, about spinning two-ply yarns. And what was happening is the two plies were, um, the, when she spun the singles, when she would turn around and spin the plies, they were kind of, um, unspinning just a little bit. So I'm going to do a demonstration on how I spin those two plies to, um, that might help it from being too loosely, uh, plied and unraveling a little bit. Anyway. All right. So this, let's see, this is, this is a, a single ply and a lot of times, I mean, this been, has been sitting on the, the wheel for a while. Um, I spun this up last week and I spun it from, from just some, I think this is Superwash BFL roving and, and it kind of it twists back on itself a little bit. It's, it's, uh, not over terribly overspun, but I kind of find, and, and maybe it just is the nature of how I spin. I kind of find that, um, a lot of times if I overspin the single that I'm usually able to correct that in the two ply. So I'm going to just, uh, but otherwise, um, yeah, if you spin it a little too loosely when you're plying, it's going to unravel just, just a little bit. So 
Anyway, I'm going to switch the camera and, and show you guys how I do that plying first before I jump into this, just to, to show a couple of tricks on getting that two ply a little tighter. Anyway, all right, I want to also give a shout out to the people who are saying hi. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Lori. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Down Home Girl. And hi, Kathy. Thanks for joining. I'm so happy that you guys are here. Okay, I'm going to switch the camera, and I'm hoping that the... Um, I'm kind of hoping that the angle is going to be okay. I keep having to, to adjust that and, because I keep knocking it out of place. All right, so hold on. Let me switch. There we are. All right, so this is my wheel. I have um, I have a couple of wheels, but this is the one I love doing. Uh, I love doing for uh, my uh, art yarns on. Um, it's the wheel that I learned on. It's a Louette uh, S51 double treadle. However, they don't make this wheel anymore. But it is really, really, really similar to the Louette S10. Um, and the difference is, is the S10 uh, is that the one that's that solid, um, that solid board for the wheel with, with you know, a hole in the middle. Um, for the most part, they spin very, very, very similarly. So, um, I like this wheel. I like this wheel a lot. I mean, I think there are other wheels out there that are, that are great, and there's other wheels that I yearn for. Um, but this wheel, I've been using it for, I got this wheel in 2002. And since then, I've collected something like 20 spindles for it. So it's kind of, you know, once you have all that, for this then it's kind of, I kind of tend to not want to use anything else anyway so I'm gonna let me show you a little bit about that um that two ply now oh, sorry I have, to, <laughs> I, have, I have to work around my tripod which is taking up a lot of real estate right now anyway so and this flyer this flyer didn't come with this wheel I, this flyer I bought separately. It's, um, this is an art yarn flyer. And I'll put a link, you can see, because it has a big old orifice here. And this thing can handle really chunky yarns. And I got this separately from somebody on Etsy. And I will put a link in the comments after the video on where you can get that. Um, so, okay, so for these two plies... I'm going to, I have spun, I spun a little bit of another ply here. And I'm going to ply those two together and just show you just a little trick that might help get a tighter spin. And what I think is, might be part of the problem um, with why that stuff is unraveling just a little bit. Like I said, um, just the nature of two plies is that it's, as you're spinning it, I kind of find that that it starts to undo the singles a little bit um, so that's why I kind of tend to want to overspin um, the spingles just a hair because it's going to make up for it in the end all right and I'm just going to use this art this art uh, flyer for it it's not ideal for for the two ply but it it really is fine all right, so I spun the singles this way, so I'm, I'm going to want to go in the other direction for for the plies. And I tend to do a long draw type of thing. Also, I try to keep this this drafting. I don't know if you can see this. Wait, let me get that to go in. I kind of keep. You know, you can see that's starting to un, unravel a little bit there. I keep that drafting triangle pretty wide because what's going to happen is those plies are going to are going to wrap on each other a little more at a different angle and it's going to make it a smoother yarn. If I were to do it close together like this, you know, it's I don't feel like I have as much control and over, you know, how tight that's going to wind up. So, I usually try to keep that drafting triangle relatively wide when I when I spin those two plies so um, and like I said uh, 
sometimes too, and I, it's going to be hard to show you on this camera, but I, I'll do, uh, I'll tend to do a long draw, especially with the two plies. Oh, this came undone here. I tend to do a long draw, especially with the two plies. And here's a trick. You can see where it was really thin right there. So to fix that, I'm just going to unwind it all the way up and let that grab there. Okay, and that kind of fix that two ply right there. All right. So like I said, I tend to go with a little bit of a long draw and I to get that to to wind on itself and and just increase that drafting triangle. So I hope that helps. I hope that answered the question as far as those, as far as getting those plies to not unravel as much. All right, let's get on to the art yarn. So with the with the art yarn, especially when I'm working with the roll logs, I mean, as I've mentioned in last week's, you know, ideally yarn. Uh, you know, yarn, like this is a sock yarn, and yarn usually comes in, in uh, here, I'll show you down here, usually comes in like four ounce weights. Um, it's just kind of standard. Or if you're buying yarn, I guess at the yarn shop, then it might be closer to like a two ounce or a 50 gram. Um, I find it kind of harder, especially with the blending boards, but even with a drum carter, sometimes it was hard to get up to four ounces. Three ounces was pretty average three and a half ounces maybe if I really packed it down tight and didn't have a lot of chunks in there. But for the most part, especially on the blending board, and I'm not even sure how much these weigh. They're they're pretty light. So you're not going to get, I mean, if I were to spin, I think there was one, this. This tiny, or this, yeah, this tiny skein. This was done, if you can see that. That was done with just one roll log and it's it's not a lot of yarn but for what I'm using it for either in my knitting I'm just gonna combine it with a bunch of different yarns and and just do um, and just let this be a pop and maybe combine it with you know something probably not that you know I might go with you know something kind of neutrally and kind of plain you know and just add some stuff together that would make this pop um so i'm not using you know i'm not going to make a whole sweater out of this um so usually i do that or like with this skein you can see i did you can see that there were this is clearly a, a different rollog right there so what I might do, like here, I started, this is one roll log. So what I'll probably do is, is just pick up another roll log and start again. And I'll either, you know, cut this out and let this be a separate yarn like that smaller skein, or I'll just go with it, you know, and let it be, all of a sudden the yarn changes. Especially with weaving, that's, that's going to work just fine. Um, with weaving... I mean, you would be doing that anyway. You, you, especially the art weaving that I do. It's it. You start with one yarn, and then all of a sudden you end up with another yarn. So anyway, so that's so what I'm gonna do. Um, as far as this goes, I'm gonna start this 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 one here on this skein right here, and that just kind of saves sp spindle space rather than having to take it off. And uh, when I wind it into a cake, I can either separate the yarns out or I can just let it be all the same yarn. Or you can just, you know, alternate back and forth. Start spinning, you know, spin halfway or a third away down on one roll log and then turn around, pick up another one and spin with that and just alternate it. And that's just going to be your yarn is the combination of those. Now, if you need like a certain amount of yarn, I think the best thing for you to do is to gather up gather up your your fiber and weigh it out 
and and do um, do the batches that way. I mean, it's going to be kind of hard as far as yardage goes because your yardage kind of depends on how evenly you spin the yarn. And I, that's just too much thinking is that I want to, you know, when I sit down to spin art yarn, I just want to make the art. So, um, so I tend to just spin the yarn and then find the pattern or the project to fit the yarn afterwards. Um, because that usually kind of frees me up a little bit more as far as, um, as, making making the yarn then I'm not at hemmed in when I'm spinning all right so I'm going to now when I do the art yarn I, of course I put it on the the ratio that's going to slow this down a bit more because really for art yarn I really want to spin a little more mindfully because I'll be dealing with textures as as I go all right so we're going to start with this one this is whoop, except for I'm going to take this pink thing off of here so I'm, you know, I just start at one end. It's it's kind of packed in there. There's no pre-drafting. Um, I just usually let the textures um, just be what they are as they're coming off the, the roll log. All right. So I'm just going to connect this one. Oh, there's a drag. What's drag? And just start spinning. I don't know. Okay, can you guys see this? I'm going to try and keep it within the camera range so you guys can see. Anyway, hi everybody who's just now joining us. And I'll put a link below for anybody who's watching the replay, or I'll put a link below to um to the the live stream that we did last week so you can see where we carded these up all right so here's a chunk this you can tell is some farm wool and the thing about art yarn that makes art yarn art yarn is the texture so as I come across things like you can see this big chunky mess right there and I'm gonna kind of slow down and tease that out a little bit and just let those textures kind of let go and see kind of let go and see what those textures pull out and just spinning it up right on so did you guys go in uh, that's perfect where you are okay good yay thank you <laughs> Yeah, I tried doing, you know, I tried doing with this Ot light right here. Oh, that might be better. I don't know. Can you see better with that Ot light? I thought it might be a little glarish, but maybe not. Anyway, all right. So oh, here's comes some really smoothish kind of stuff. Right on. All right, here comes some farm walls. I'm going to try and get some of that, some barber pulling going on a little bit too. Try and let some of that chunk up. All right, needs to pull in a little faster. All right, here comes a, a big old chunk of curls. Now for this, let's see if I can find an edge to grab onto. Because I don't want to get like that curl tip, because I want that curl tip to be, you know, a curl. So let's grab it right there. And then I'm going to tease what I can without messing up a lot of that curl. Yeah, for the most part, a lot of times the answer to art yarn is to just let go and see 
how it ends up wrapping around itself. Because usually, usually the lock just does what it wants to do. Good with the hot light? Okay, good. Yeah, especially with, <laughs> with of course, now you can see all the, the lint on my dark dress. <laughs> That's all right. You can see the fiber a little better. All right. A lot of the smooth stuff on the inside here. I'll create a little, you know, because I don't want a whole bunch of just smooth. So I'll just create a bunch of little, little poofies. That'll help some. <laughs> hey, Brenda. All right. Oh, look, there's a piece of something. All right, did you guys get your board, blending boards out this week? Did y'all make some some uh, art bats, roll logs? Yeah, I, I went through some of those buckets of the stuff that we, we started. You know, I had pulled buckets of the fiber together, and so I uh, did a few more so I would have, I could show, um, have some more to spin this week for today. Anyway. Oop. Here comes another big chunk. See, I want that to be kind of... I want some of that texture of that farm wool to show up. I don't know if you can see... right there. You can see a little bit of the texture, the ends of that farm wall right there. Yeah, that's what I like to I want that stuff to show up. I mean, I guess with some of the farm walls that aren't locks, I mean, some of the, that crimp texture is just really wonderful. And I want to show that off a little bit, even if it's just subtly. on itself a little bit. All right, I think it's time to move this. There we go. Oop, sorry. <laughs> I'm so used to doing the long draw and working back here. I'm going to try and keep it right here. Yeah, the long, I find the long draw a lot of times, especially if I'm getting a lot of over twist right through here, that sometimes I can do a long draw and that, that corrects some of the over twist that's right there. You see, and I'm trying to get a little bit of barber pulling detail right there. Oh, here comes, now that's about to fall out. So let's see. I think I'm going to try and tease out because I don't want to like grab that tip let's see maybe I'll just grab the middle right there oh, which way am I going this way okay get that black out of there for right now okay and that to wrap around a little bit. There we go. You can see that. There we go. Is that better? See, and right after that big texture, putting some smooth in there sometimes will help make that texture pop out just a little bit. Ugh, oh, I gotta work on my posture because I tend to 
hunch over the wheel. And that messes up my back really bad. So, it's trying to have good posture. <laughs> oh, now here comes. What is this? Okay. It's got that interesting, and you can see there's, there's like this. Can you see? There we go. This yellow hairy and this black something or other. All right. So I want to maybe let that. just a little bit and that's going to be too thick so I'm going to try and thin out some of that in the middle there we go all right I think I can live with that just to clarify, will you leave this yarn as a single ply, or will you and will you wet finish it after you finish? Yes and yes. Um, I think I think I'm going to leave it as a single ply. I'm pretty sure I will leave it as a single ply. Usually, usually, as I'm going through, I mean, I guess with the way that the texture is on on some of these areas, um. I'll go ahead and leave it as a single ply if it's real textury. But if I'm if I'm spinning it up and it's and it gets kind of boring, like maybe there's not as much texture as I thought there would be, that's when I might ply it together. I might do another one that's and sometimes I'll even ply it with one that's more textured. But for the most part with the locks in this and with some of the the stuff like this I might go ahead and leave this as a single ply. And I'm finding too that the single plies, I mean, lately the art yarn I've been wanting to use for weaving. And I'm finding that, that I can't, I tend to not like to go as thick as far as, as the weft goes when I'm weaving. Um, now, as far as a warp goes, then something like, you know, this big old, let me see, right, this, there we go, that big chunky two-ply, I think would be a great warp, like an art yarn warp, if I put it with some sari ribbon, and maybe some, something crazy like, you know, ball fringe or something like that, or ball trim, um, then that might be cool, so, but otherwise, yeah, even, because like even this, this is a, a single, and it doesn't have, it doesn't have any crazy curls or anything in it, but it has just a little bit of subtle texture, and the barber polling, oh, can you see, focus, focus, and maybe it doesn't like, here we go. There it is. Yeah, the barber polling in that, um, I think is really interesting. And I think if I plied it, then I would lose that detail. So, so yeah, it just kind of depends. <laughs> anyway, I hope that answers. Oh, and wet finishing, definitely. Because especially with singles, um, it, it, you saw that one that I unraveled that had the two the two different row logs in it. I haven't wet finished any of those yet and that just kind of kinked up on itself. So wet finishing definitely helps that. Um, but I wouldn't do it necessarily. Well, and I have to do it, especially if there's curls in it. Um, I have to kind of do it relatively gently. Now oh, here's a big, okay, a big wad of curl. Um, do it relatively gently because I don't want to damage the curls or pull any of that stuff out. So, so that's what I I would have to to try and and manage um, with the wet felting. But the wet felting definitely helps uh, the the kink and uh, to with the balance. So anyway, yeah. Now look at that. That came out interesting. You can see the. 
little bit of curl right through there. All right, let's see, I need to move this again. I'm looking at my notes to see if I've missed anything. Oh, sorry, I don't mean <laughs> I'm doing that long draw again. I spend a lot of time spinning way over here. Maybe I should have put the camera on my hips. Anyway. Oh, here's another big old chunk of now this has like some farm wool and some curl and I don't want all of that going on. So I'm gonna pull that curl out a little bit. Now just drop it. Oh, goodness. There we go. <laughs> See, I almost need a camera hung from the ceiling. That would be easier. All right. Now here's a little bit of yarn. No, that's still part of the farm wool. We had some yarn in here, didn't we? Oh, you know what? This isn't even the skein that we did up. Oh, heck. <laughs> ah! All right. This isn't even the skein we, we carded up the other day. This is some, This is a totally different skein. A uh, totally different raw log. Sorry. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to get this done to this point, and I'm going to add another one in there. Sorry about that, y'all. Goodness. Do I ever steam finish your singles? You know, I've... I have steam finished um, silk, um, and I've done that where, you know, I wind it off on a on a skein winder, a big. Uh, I have these big. I don't know if you can see. Let's see. I have these big gigantic um, upright skein winders, um, but I think you could do it on like an umbrella swift too, or and I would. Um, wind it off the wheel onto those and and then block it with a steamer and I used I used like a um, like the shark steamers but I, th I think I, I got that steamer because I also wanted to use it to clean stuff but it worked great um, but blocking silk that way because if I did, I spun silk singles, that would, um, that, for the silk, um, wet finishing it, it was just too fine. So it seems like if you, if you're doing singles and it's really fine that you think that a wet, you know, the wear of throwing it in the hot, in a hot water bath wouldn't benefit it, um, then steaming definitely is the way to go. And also too, I think for fine yarns, really super fine yarns, it, I think steam finishing is best. Okay. I'm going to put this poser aside and get the, <laughs> the one that we really did, um, card up, uh, last week. Cause that was the whole point. So you guys could see how it spins up, right? Sorry about that. All right. And like I said, I'm just going to go right after this one. And this was a big, a little chunk that was on the end that was about to fall off. So I'm just going to start there. Anyway, this big chunk of farm wool. I generally don't like starting with the farm wool. I like starting with something a little smoother, but meh, there it is. I guess if I was starting a new, a new um, yarn, then I would start with something smooth first. Makes it a little easier. And here's all that, yeah. You see, remember I carded all that, that denim in there. So sometimes, especially with stuff like this or the yarn bits, um, if I were to twist, I don't know if you can see, right here. Ta-da! So a lot of times what I'll do um, because if I were to just leave that twist, then it might fall out. I'll just poke it in and just let part of it hang out here. 
on either side and just just kind of wedge it in between part of that fiber so it becomes a net but it's in there it's in there pretty good now and let that twist hold it in together so that's a lot of times how I would deal with because I did a lot of that cutting up the yarn and and throwing it in as well so that would help with that there's a see here's a lot of that brown chunky farm wool and a bit of vegetable matter get that out of there all right it's getting kind of a little over twisted right there I think as far as steamers go, you know, because I have, I have like a travel steamer. Uh, last, last June I, I had to, I had a formal gala I had to go to and needed a way to, <laughs> to iron a taffeta gown. So I, um, I bought one of those cheapy little travel steamers. Now here you can see there's more of that denim. I'm going to try and, but it's right by some farm wool. So I'm going to smooth some of that farm wool out and see if I can just wedge that denim right between this, I think it's wool and silk, and this farm wool. Anyway, so back to the steamer. I had to buy one of those cheap little $7 travel steamers. And the way that, you know, that's like a canister upright with one of those little spouts that, that, uh, that look... Um, that's you know kind of long with the the different holes with the steam that totally would work because I mean technically when I had it on the when I had it on the um, on the skein winder then I would just take take the steamer and just run it down the length and you could literally see just watch it just just I mean just seal those those yarn that silk yarn just right the twist into place. You know, you could see all this tension now. I'm getting so much twist in here. I mean, this is okay. So much twist in this into it would seal that twist into place just really well. So I can see where a travel steamer would do the same thing. So, like I said, I love my um, my shark steamer, but I also like it because it, you know, cleaned the the <laughs> it cleaned my enameled uh, old enameled sink really well it shined up it shines up your sink great um but but just a little cheapy travel steamer should work too heck for that matter it seems like i've seen where people um will wind their their yarns onto a, a nitty knotty and then you can even just hold it over a tea kettle but i kind of like where you can rake the steamer the head of a steamer across the yarn and it seems like that really that really gets shoots that that steam through the fibers and sets it really 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 well so anyway I probably over answered your question so I hope that helps otherwise um just in uh I like doing I just do a soak for maybe 20 minutes in a in in a hot hot bath in the sink, and it's just whatever comes out of my um, taps hot, and we don't have it set on super scalding. I mean, it's set kind of medium hot. <laughs> anyway, that was a big old chunky thing of, and I pulled out this little piece only because it was just sitting on the surface right here and I knew that that would fall out excuse me anyway so I just wanted to address that and sometimes if it's like this big you know this is this was that interesting stuff that was semi felted and it's it's coming out in these chunks that are a little bigger than you can see that a little bigger than I want to than I want to spin so I just you know, just stretch and tease it and trying to keep some of those tips and the kink in place. Let's 
here's now that's interesting with a little bit of sari ribbon and I'm you know what I need to these fibers are a little short so I'm going to throw some of this blue up in here because that's going to hold it in place a little better get a break from that farm wool and go back to it and I'm going to let this farm wool just kind of wrap around that green a little bit and just show it off as is. There we go. And some of these short areas, I like, I'm going back over just with a little bit of, of some of the long wool that's in the center. Um, and that kind of helps hold it together because if I did like bits of farm wool after bits of farm wool then that that's going to be a weak spot in the yarn and I don't I don't want that even though in weaving it's kind of it's kind of all relative because the weaving holds holds that kind of yarn together anyway but just in case I end up using this in knitting because you never know all right there's a bunch of denim, so I'm trying to wedge that denim in between some of these longer fibers. See, so that kind of locks that into place. Oh, there's some, well, no, that's not too loose. That is. Yeah, that's not bad. All right. Now there's a bunch of, boy, I put a lot of denim, denim in this. All right. Oh, and here we come to some a big old chunky thing of locks. So I'm going to try and wrap that stuff. There's some farm wool here, so I'm going to move that farm wool out of the way and make sure that I get this stuff here to work with this locks, this big chunk of locks. And I'm going to move that down. That's a little bit of denim. Okay. And just keep my hands off of it and just let it do what it's going to do. All right, and I'm going to add this back up in here somewhere because I'm, I'm going to run out of fiber there. All right. There we go. Can you see that big old chunk? Right on. Okay. that tucking that denim in there's a smaller lock I'm just gonna let that be what's gonna be and I try to keep it I mean somewhat consistent I on this kind of yarn I don't want to have anything like super skinny I mean I think I think that's about as thin as I let's see that's about as thin as I want to go on this stuff so if if it gets thin then I can break off and and re retwist that fiber up there and and kind of add to that to thicken it up just a little bit oh here comes some is that sorry silk now that stuff's somewhat sturdy so I'm gonna let that just pull out and be what it is there's nothing in with that but at this end, towards the end, I'm going to get some of that long fiber to attach to it so it makes it a little sturdier. And I'm going to have to reattach some fiber up here. There we go. And there's another question. Do you use one of your giant roll log? Have you used one of your giant roll logs and use it to do core spin? Yes. And we're going to go over core spinning as soon as I get through this one. I'm going to show that. Um, actually, that I I like core spinning. Um, and core spinning, to be honest, it's a little easier to get a more balanced yarn with. And it's actually a little easier to spin with. But to be honest, I kind of like... It doesn't have as much spring, though. And in some ways that's good and in some ways that's bad. 
it's good. Core spun is great for warps. It's excellent for art yarn warps um, because you you have a you know a strong core fiber. So and you want a strongest yarn for that. Um, but the uh, but as far as um, like knitting, I like knitting with the art yarn singles a lot because it's just um, there's a lot of I don't know, there's a lot of spring to them. Um, I don't know, and they're just, they're just nice. Oh, look at that big old chunky mess. Now, there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can start to tuck it between these fibers. I can stretch it. But I think I want to keep it that way because even though it looks like an ugly hot mess, I think as just a, a you know, if I treat it like a curl... I think it might be kind of interesting. So we'll see. I'm going to tuck it in just a little bit. And let it twist on itself just a hair. There we go. See, now isn't that kind of interesting? It made like a big... I mean, it's kind of... Like I said, on its own, it looks like something I would... If I was a real fine spinner, I would throw that away. But as far as art yarn, it's pretty interesting. You think, but, but you know what? This is bothering me right here. So I'm going to add some of this lightly on top of that and see what happens. There we go. There, that helped it a little. That kind of nailed it down just a little bit. some of that spin off of there yeah the texture man I'm telling you the texture is what makes the art yarn um and this is way more textural than what we were using even though this had this had more curls I think but I, there wasn't as much texture on the inside now look at that there's so much texture that 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 filled up that part of the spindle pretty pretty big time all right there's more of that farm wool. You can tell. Now look at my skirt. There's all that vegetable matter. It's uh. It still falls out of that. Even when I'm weaving, I'm still picking it out of there. And it's just the nature of it. Looking back through to see if there's any other questions. Hold on. Oh. Not that you see, I have to kind of pay attention. Because there's a big old chunk of denim. But I'm gonna I'm gonna pick some of that off and tuck it back in there and deal with it in a minute. And I'm going to let's see. Yeah, that's in there pretty good. Alright. Poking some of that denim in between this long fiber. Now that's an interesting little pink piece. I don't want to lose that. Alright, here's some yarn. And the same with the yarn is trying to wedge it between some of these pieces as I come to it or if it's long enough it can twist in there oh, we're coming to a bunch of yarn right here this yarn right here. Deal with this lock first. Alright, and it's getting a little thick, so I'm gonna have to I'm thinning this out just a bit. Wedge that in there. Oh, 
Uh, I'm not sure if I love that. There we go. That's a little better. some of this yarn. This looks like a bit of a piece that I can just let spin out. So I'm going to break this off in a minute because we're already approaching an hour. Gosh, where does the time go, you guys? All right, and I'm going to break, stop this here, and I'm going to show you guys how to do, how I do a core spun with that other um, rollog that we did. So let me, and I'll just pick this up and finish this spindle out probably with some of this other bluesy, greensy type stuff. Anyway. So, get a fresh symbol. Um, so when I do core spun, I use I like to use um cone yarns, but I have to admit I am fortunate enough to live in a part of the country that used to have a bunch of fiber mills. So it's easy for us to like go into into the thrift store and find find um mill end yarns so i know um you can use cones that are generally used for weaving um you can use that kind of yarn uh i've found uh embro embroidery cones work too but i think those are kind of pricey i'm not sure um but check you know check your thrift store even even here in durham but again i mean, I mean north carolina was full of 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 excuse me textile factories that have been closed down but even in Asheville I could go to the Goodwill and every now and again come across these for really 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 cheap um, I just bought uh, some really fine stuff that's probably too fine for core spun but great for for auto wrapping at um, this thrift store in Durham um, they also had some loop yarn some kind of fine loop yarn did I just make a hot mess of this Anyway, so here's what I usually do. I usually put this down on the floor. Oh, heck. You know, this tripod's kind of in the way. Okay. I'll put it right here. Darn it. I'm trying to get it to stand up so it won't go on. You know what? It's just going to have to go all over the place. All right. So I'm going to start. And again... I get the, I use, I use it where it'll spin the s slowest, and I'll get my leader started. And this yarn actually is on the edge of being a little thin for coarse bun, but I think it'll be fine. So, I. I like to, I'm right-handed, and to be honest, I like to, when I do, usually when I do singles, I go this way, I go clockwise, but when I'm doing core spun, I like to go counterclockwise, and the reason being is that the fiber is going to wrap this way. And by doing that, if I were wrapping the fiber this way, then I was, I could, I'm only seeing what's going to be on the inside. If I wrap this way, I'm seeing the outside of, 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 let me see, I'm seeing the outside. So I want the, the fiber to wrap over and under, oh, over first. Well, it wraps over first this way. I want it to <laughs> wrap to where it's going to be on the outside. So anyway, so let me take my roll log. And I'm going to first just kind of spin these two pieces together like this. And 
and then and I have to kind of go slow and you see I'm just basically drafting that fiber out and letting it lay on there if the cone was standing up then it would be easier to pull up um, and not knock around so much and like I said this is a little on the thin side but I think it's fine and I can even do things like let that core wrap on the outside a little bit get that fire again you know so you can see I don't know if you can see that every now and again where it stands out. It's really fun too when you're getting like a core yarn that's that's that actually goes with your rollog, then that's a nice way to just add a little extra texture in there. But if it's, you know, I you don't have to do that. If if you're just, you know, upcycling a ugly yarn, then then that's fine. You know, you can even get you can even use like that crochet cotton that they that you can get at at Michael's or somewhere like that. I just I like using cone yarn. I guess you could use balls or cakes of yarn. And actually, if you use if you use a yarn um, for a core that has a little bit of a hair, like a mohair, then that hair actually grabs the fiber a little bit and kind of helps with the core spinning as well. So, and that's just basically it. You kind of draft it out and you can draft sections at a time again this thing is all right getting a little stuck because now it's kind of almost uh, where is it oh it's way down there all right it's just rolling around a little bit let me see if i can get some of this texture up here so you can see how i would deal with that so yeah, so when it comes to like a lock, then I just kind of let that same same way just spin around. And with core spun, sometimes those locks can be a little wilder um, because they're just actually just laying around on that core. All right, and let me show you a little bit with this sorry fiber as well. You can just let it hang out and just you know lock it in with a little bit of wool and that's about it and you can go as fine as you want or you can just you know make it pretty thick you can even do you know just keep layering it on top until it's as thick as you want it uh, it's taking up a little too fast though That's pretty much it. Core spinning. Anyway. Yeah, you can, and it's really fun too if you're doing core spinning just with a little bit of fine fiber or some roving. And you can just add the curls in. Like I can just take the curl and tease out from the end. And just let it. Yeah, and then there you got like a lock spun piece right there and that'll be that's even that's really fun for like in the weaving because that'll just pop right out and that's why this big orifice is awesome because it'll it just goes right through have to get it real smooth sometimes it's fun to do it really smooth but sometimes it's uh, it gets a little twisted and needs to needs to take in a little faster because I'm getting a little bit over twist here and let that all right there we go Yeah, if you find you're getting a little over twist, then doing a little bit of a long draw will help disperse that twist down through the yarn. So, anyway. Oh. All right. 
that's a nice texture right there. What you can also do is I could even bunch it up and make it a more condensed little little do it right there. Connect and get a little thicker. Now that was a lock. I think I want that to come back out. Pull that texture back out rather than letting it sit in into the yarn a little bit. See, here's another one right here. on here too. All right. And that's how you do core spinning. So that's how it's spinning up. You know, it's and like I said, it, as you get to the textures, basically if you just slow down and just kind of think of, of what the texture's doing. And then, and then, kind of massage it out and and see how what the texture wants to do as far as with the twist. Just slow it down a little bit, and then that's how you deal with all the textures in the row logs. Okay, so we're right at an hour, and and I'm gonna end it here. So I enjoyed doing this. We'll have to do some more demos. Um, I'm put a link in the in the um comments below. Wait, you know what? I'm going to switch this. Hold on. There we go. I'll put a link in the comments below um, to the to the Fiber Art Collective. So if you're not in the Fiber Art Collective, I would love for you guys to join me there. Um, there's people from all over that are sharing. It's amazing. Um, all the different uh, all the different techniques and disciplines and just inspirations that everybody shares in the collective. So Click on the link below and join the collective and share share some of the work that you guys are doing. So thanks for joining. I'm so glad that you guys came. And and let me know. Let me know what other kind of demos you guys want to see. I mean, um, I would love to do this again sometime. So uh, just uh, keep checking on in the email or subscribe to this channel. Um, and it'll give you an announcement when I go live. I think it gives you an announcement when I go live. Um, otherwise, I announce it in the newsletter and on the, fi on the Fiber Art Collective page. So anyway, I'm Stacey Budge Camison. Thanks for joining. It was good to see you guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.